Welcome, everyone, to this week's uh, Founders Chat. It's really great having you here, whether you're joining us live right now or if you're joining us on IGTV later or on YouTube. Welcome, welcome. Uh, essentially, how this is going to work is for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be chatting with Fabiana Clement. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Am I? Yes. OK, perfect. OK. Um, so we're going to be talking to her. She is the Chief Data Officer and Founder at Y Data. Um, and I had the, the honor of getting to meet Fabiana back at, in March at our first ever uh, virtual pitch event. It was March 11th in Madrid. So I'm um, really excited. I know that you've been doing so much since then. And I have a little bit of a list that I'll get into. But first and foremost, I um, just want to welcome everyone here. And if you don't know me, if you don't know Volition, my name is Melanie Ewan. I am one of the co-founders and managing partners of Volition. So essentially, we uh, seek to elevate entrepreneurship through one-on-one -on -one coaching, through community-based events like the one that I met Fabiana at, um, as well as through skills-based training. So welcome. We have these fa fa fabulous, fabulous founders chats. Why not? Every single week, I at least have since kind of, I guess, April. Um, and it's been really great to get to know the founders in our community better and what you're up to. Um, yeah. So today we're talking about why data. And I was looking at your website, Fabiana, and uh, saw that you talk about it as the first data set experimentation platform. And I was looking through your social channels. And honestly, um, like I, I work at Women in Tech World. I'm surrounded by tech. I hear the language all the time, but I'm not a tech person. And I'm quite excited to hear you kind of like untangle what it is that you do um, and what you've built. So welcome here today. Um, Fabiana, it's great to have you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so let's get started. Usually I, li I like to start with um, understanding a little bit more about who you are and the story uh, behind Why Data and what, what is this all about? So, you know, that kind of like typical, what's the origin stories and how do you fit in? Yeah. Well, uh, um, I, I have to say that to start a company was not in my plans. Like, I, I think it's never uh, <laughs> in your plans and when you are like in your professional career, you are not thinking, well, I want to create a company. Um, but I, I always worked with data. Um, well, it's, it's a kind of my background also from university. Uh, I study applied math. So uh, to work with data uh, was like the obvious path. But right. uh, while working um, in several different companies from big enterprises to startups, uh, and with all this hype around machine learning and data mm -hmm. science, a very cool stuff, very sexy area to be in. Yeah. I started understanding that it's very sexy and interesting, but it's also very new, yeah. uh, which means that there are a lot of things that, that we are not yet aware or not well yeah. set up in a lot yeah, of companies. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and that was a bit what brought me here today with Y Data. So while working as a data scientist, I always had struggles with data. So either because there was not enough or other times because there is this thing called GDPR that does not allow you to get access to the data uh, mm. in a timely manner, at least. Um, others, other problems, it's also, to, and this might be funny, too much access to the data in a sense that mm -hmm. you, you just know who is in, on your data set and you know it might be your colleague that it's just right by your side and suddenly mm -hmm aware of the salary and so on. So all right. this stuff, uh, made me realize issues. And while talking with this, uh, about this with my co-founder, uh, Gonzalo, I understood, we, we understood that, okay, that there is here an opportunity. Maybe, mm. maybe this is worthwhile to explore. Of course, uh, um, my first idea is, okay, let's explore it. But uh, the idea of jumping into, okay, let's do this a full-time job yeah. was his uh, at the time. So, and before jumping, like, and deciding right away, let's create the company, let's just quit our jobs and create a company. 
uh, we decided to do a test. It was a, a, a mm. kind of validation. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you are, yeah, collision. We went to collision uh, yes, yeah, for the first yeah. year that the yeah. event was in Toronto. It was the in 2019? Exactly. 19. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. so long ago. <laughs> yeah. So long ago. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> exactly. We got tickets to, to Collision. Uh, we were lucky enough to get tickets. Uh, and we decided, okay, let's jump on a plane. Let's go to Collision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, let's also see the Niagara Falls and so on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we decided, okay, let's do, uh, like, this PowerPoint with our idea, with our objective and the benefits that we are delivering, mm -hmm. uh, start talking with people that work in the area and might have this problem and start to understand if there is like market for this or this yeah. is just a problem that we know or in yeah. our reality, of course. Uh, and we understood, okay, this is a thing. Uh, and from there, that's when we just uh, decided to jump in and to create the, the company. That, right. That was the okay. Data, yeah. Wow. Okay. So when you're saying that people can use Y data to, um, mm -hmm. I call it data set, data, data set experimentation. So if I am wanting to interact and use uh, Y data, like who am I, who am I that's coming to your platform and how might I use it? Yeah. So the, our platform and our solution is dedicated to data science teams. So okay. people that are uh, working on a daily basis with data and struggle with um, understanding of the data they are working with, access, yeah. And of course, um, the quality or the readiness of the data to be used for um, the development of models and machine learning solutions. So basically, our target is definitely those data science teams. Okay, okay, probably not me. Well, I do work with a data science team actually at my nonprofit, and I was I was thinking about that because I'd be curious. This is kind of just a question for <laughs> myself. I'm kind of curious. Do you does do, does um does your solution deal well with qualitative data or is it more like quantitative? Um, I do research essentially, but I do qualitative research. So a lot of like um, bringing in like large data sets, but of what people have been talking about and, and we, what we do like categorical analysis and that kind of stuff, or is it like numbers and, and such? So obviously I'm not a data person. With mixed kind of data sets. So we are not strictly just working with, uh, let's say numerical data sets. Yeah. But for example, we, we work only with structured data, which means that things like text and you see there uh, a lot of solutions around it, like just analyzing um, Twitters and stuff. We don't work on that area. We on data sets that are mainly used for big, by big organizations. Like, okay. uh, how can I say, so census data sets. So that, that's a, a, simple, uh, a simple example of the okay. type of data that we work with, yeah. Okay, awesome. So you went to Collision in 2019, realized that this was actually a viable idea, started building it out um, kind of, I guess it's like a year and a half later now, fast forward a year and a half. And I know like since March, I've seen, I was just like looking at your last month. I haven't even looked at like what you've done since March. <laughs> just in the last month, I saw that you've been named top 30 startups in the Portugal FinTech Report 2020. You won the pitch battle at the Next Web 2020. And you're now part of Techstars Montreal as well. And that's like just the last like three posts on your LinkedIn, essentially. <laughs> and I was like, this is incredible. And I know there's more too. And I know that you have a podcast that you've just our podcast series that you've just announced too. So I'm going to talk about that, but what, like, what is it just that this is like so needed that, that it kind of like you developed it and people just like wanted it. Like what does this year and a half look like for you? How have you gone from, I'm at the at collision just talking about it to, you know, every single week we're kind of like yeah. growing and like, it's just, it seems like it's exploding, but what has it been like to, to be in the business and building it? Yeah, it, it's 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 not easy on the sense that the the type, kind of technology that we are building uh, it's it's complex and well mm. we a lot of 
uh, people around it and also a, a lot of knowledge around research. We work a lot right. with deep learning. Uh, it's not easy to find people on those areas that have right. a to, to work with. That's the first struggle that we, we might have. Uh, but essentially, it has been a, an interesting ride. So <laughs> we had the need to, of course, in order to make ourselves uh, more successful, we had to go out of Portugal. That was our mm. first need. So to, okay. go, to go for other markets. Uh, and on that sense, Google for Startups, the program we were in Madrid, uh, right. yes. helped us a lot to expand in this case for, for Spain, for example. Okay. Um, yeah. That was, uh, without a doubt, the acceleration point, let's say, when okay. we got the opportunity to be in a different market. That was the first. From there, it was easier, let's say, to go for other markets and to spread to different um, regions in different areas. Also, mm. another thing that had helped a lot is, and, and this is funny, this was uh, one of the things that we were taught uh, in Google, uh, which is the give first. Uh, and I think it's interesting when you accept that to be uh, to be there for others to help without uh, you know expecting anything um, for your side right away mm. just help to be there to create community has helped mm. a lot for example we are also we have also part of our solution is open source and, oh right and yeah that is something that for us brought us uh, visibility and also a way to reach out for people with our solution. We want people to hear about why data um, mm. and connect us with good stuff. And that's that's basically okay. how, how it went. Cool. Okay. So is your next kind of big thing this Techstars Montreal? I'm, I'm curious about what your... Mm -hmm. uh, what your vision is and like, what are your like kind of next steps, but also what's the bigger vision for Y data? Yeah, sure. So, uh, definitely Techstars Montreal, uh, it's a way for us to be closer to the tech hub, uh, yeah. let's say, uh, so Montreal a is uh, AI. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. a very strong city on AI. I, I, I'm not saying that uh, you have Toronto, you have Alberta as well, with very nice schools on that area, but that it's it's undeniable that um, Montreal is that city. You have right. Joshua Benju, who is the father of deep learning there. So uh, it, it's kind of, you cannot miss Montreal if you are in the AI uh, area. And that's why we, we went there. We, we want to be closer to, to the tech that we use uh, mm -hmm. through, through research and, and so on. So that, that was the, the main objective, but also to be closer to the North American market in general. Right. And I think that definitely Techstars Montreal opened that up for us. Um, right. Because we did not have a presence there, so it was the let's say the easiest way to penetrate in the market. Um, okay. Yeah. In terms okay. of the vision for yeah. what data, definitely we are in our baby steps. Let's say uh, in terms of the product and also the 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 company itself. Um, so we are at this moment. Uh, in a phase of product market fit. So it's not like um, we have, to, we are testing the product in the market. Yeah. Um, and after that, our plans are of course to expand and to have this booming. And that's, that's the idea. And of course, still pursue the, the vision that we want every data science just to have access to the best data they mm. can in order to do a good job. Mm. Uh, that's to to build the best AI models and good data sets might be related with okay solving issues like privacy for example okay how can mm -hmm. I act uh, without having to compromise um, people information on the other hand you yeah. have also 
things like fairness and bias that everyone talks about, you can see them on data, but how can you solve that prior to build the machine learning model? Mm -hmm. that's, that's very related with data, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love actually, I, I was looking at your website and during, in your FAQs, you have, you have a question around, um, does why data help us combat bias in data? Um, yeah. And I really, I appreciate that you have that on your, on your website um, and the answer that you provided. So I'd be curious if you um, <laughs> feel like kind of jumping into that at all here in terms of like what, when people are talking about bias and data, what kind of, um, uh, so for instance, if you were talking to some, some startups or a big corporation or, or whatever, or who are, like people listening here today are generally entrepreneurs. If you're in the audience, you can tell us who you are here today. Um, but what kind of like tips would you give in terms of how do you prevent bias and data? Do you have any, any thoughts that you would share on that? Could share on that, not to put you on the spot about this really difficult question. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a very good question. Um, there are, a lot of different ways of having bias in data, you know. Uh, yeah. And I, I always like to bring this example that happened many years ago where uh, computers were not even uh, near to exist. Uh, mm. in, a, in a way, we know them today, so with a large capacity to do data processing. But I, I think it was in a US election, um, there was some kind of polls, they contact, reached out some people, uh, and asked uh, for who are you going to vote and the idea was mm. to have like this estimations to know which candidate would um, win so the republican or the democrat uh, yeah. and at the time i do remember they only called for a few houses of uh, white men's with in their latest 50s very wealthy people by the way uh, mm -hmm. and, all, all, they, all of them, they, they gave like a similar answer, and the, 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 the elections, the, the like, like the previews for the elections were totally wrong. Yeah. And th this is a kind of bias in the data. And it in data collection. A, it's a data collection. So yeah. On the first, how do you? My, my first, definitely my, my, my first. Um. um well. What I would say is people, when deciding what data to collect and how to collect it, uh, that's, that's the first step to yeah. avoid bias. It's very mm -hmm. hard, but it, it, it is in the process of data collection as well. And on the yeah. other hand, of course, you have always to explore your data and to know what your data has. So, and don't limit yourself to basic questions and when you are exploring your data. You, mm there are things which might be surprising. For example, just the fact that you have more males than females in a data set, because that's the reality and sometimes happens, it mm -hmm. might present less percentage in accuracy of detecting a possibility of having a disease, for example, mm. lives. So uh, you do that question, but you have to be sure that you balance that data set in order to get good accuracy for both genders, right? And yeah. the, the list goes on. Sometimes it's not possible to spot everything, but those those are concerns that you have to have. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. So is this something I was looking at your um, your podcast that you have <laughs> podcast series? And I don't know if you talk about bias on there at all. It's a very interesting uh, conversation and there are lots of resources available, but I think like, mm -hmm. just like what you're talking about previously about how this, this whole field around machine learning and AI and all the things is growing, understanding how bias plays into data and what impact that has is still, I think we're still learning a lot. And um, mm -hmm. what I'm curious about is about the podcast series. So it's that it's called, uh, I don't have what it's called. When so I know it's a, privacy. What, yes. what's it called? When machine learning meets privacy. <laughs> when machine learning meets privacy. I, I'm down here, a podcast series on data privacy for machine learning, and that you yeah. touch on AI ethics and how data privacy impacts okay. the use of data. Okay. And you are the host for this series, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. We, we have awesome. Invited... Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, tell us more about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us more. Okay. Awesome. Uh, 
uh, yeah, we have a, well, the first episode is, it's me just explaining a bit, what is the privacy, what are the problems, but we have a, a series of guests. Uh, for example, uh, the next episode will be about specifically regulations and then how you can um, interpret regulations. What are in reality they saying? So, and the challenges that organizations are dealing with to be compliant with GDPR. Mm -hmm. GDPR. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking just about GDPR, I'm talking about FIPEDA, CCBAs, LGBTs, all of those. Yeah. Uh, we are talking with a specialist on that subject. Uh, she's a, also a, a Canadian woman, an entrepreneur. Okay. Here, so it's a very Ooh. interesting topic, very hot topic. Yeah. In, in, uh, in yeah. this, and it's, it's amazing how, how we see that regulations exist but uh, they are kind it's it's hard to 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 know how to implement them uh, then we also have some other guests one of them uh, will specifically talk about ai ethics and fairness uh, mm -hmm. and how companies and organizations are becoming more and more concerned about it so right. it, it's Nowadays, it's not like you have a regulation saying um, that you need to be fair, but you need to, for example, explain why your machine learning is taking a decision and mm. on what was based. That is, mm -hmm. on the, for example, and those are concerns that can, organizations are more becoming more aware. So there, there are a lot of consultancy being requested on that area and it's amazing that finally we are understanding that the impact that data and machine learning can have um, on our lives and basically yeah, yeah we also, absolutely and we talk about other topics uh, I don't know federated learning uh, other methods that Lots, data, all the things that can be used for privacy and yeah so okay so if there's people the sorry I have a, there's been a fly i keep doing this and it's it is a fly that's why i'm doing this by the way <laughs> um it's really bothering me but okay so if people want to learn more about all the things you're talking about um on this this uh podcast series where can they access the podcast so we have it we are doing that uh, for the mlops community so okay. first and foremost, if you are a person that works uh, with machine learning, definitely MLOps community is a nice community to be in. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you can find them uh, on YouTube, Anchor as well. Um, okay. And well, through LinkedIn page, we are always posting whenever a new episode yes. is, uh, is out. So yeah. Yes. Follow okay. Yes. I was going to say, I highly recommend everyone here go, um, follow Y Data and Fabiana on LinkedIn because there's lots of great updates. Um, and that's ML Ops. And I see, saw that you mentioned if you're in machine learning, there's an ML Ops Slack group as well. It looks like that um, yeah. it's probably really good to be in if you're in machine learning. So um, that's amazing. I know we only have a few minutes left here. So if anyone, and welcome to everyone who's joined us, whether, whether live or later or on IGTV or on YouTube, welcome, welcome. Um, so we are talking right now to Fabiana Com Com Clement. Um, the Chief Data Officer and Founder at Y Data. So if you've just kind of tuned in, please do go back and check out IGTV later. Um, you're going to hear about the, IG, uh, the origin story of Y Data, um, as well as uh, all the things that they've been doing in the last kind of like year and a half. Um, and, and we talked about bias, and there's just so many pieces. So go back and listen. I highly recommend. Um, so something, yes, fantastic. I see a will do. I also saw someone say in the comments that you're doing really great work, Fabiana. So I'm just going to pass along that message if you didn't happen to see that. Um, I thought that was really sweet. So something I would love to learn that we always ask is, it sounds like, I mean, you went from data science to this unexpected entrepreneur route in your life. Um, and it sounds like you've learned so much in the last year and a half. And I'd love to know what, uh, what kind of tips you might have for your peer entrepreneurs, particularly those who are kind of starting out, um, starting out this year, let's say. Yeah. I think that first and foremost, um, value your time. Uh, time is the most precious thing that you have. You might think it's not, but it is. So use it wisely. 
and mm. try to prioritize to not give so much importance to some stuff that are minimal and might not bring that much of return for you right. and your company as well. Um, and try to not forget yourself in the process. That, that's also mm. an important thing. So it's very easy to, for you to get consumed by the company. So the company yeah. is yours and you want it mm -hmm. to start. So uh, do not forget yourself. Give some time yeah. for yourself and for the ones you love. Time does not yeah. go back. So, yeah. I love that. Thank you. It was really, really great advice to give. You can get consumed um, by our company. And like, I, I love my company, but companies do come and go over time. But um, you yourself do not. And you're, the people around you um, are so important. And your time, like you say, you can't get back. So I think that's really important. and appreciate that advice. So in terms of how we can then support you um, in your journey, I mean, obviously, you have a lot of supporters, people here who are here today are learning from you and learning about why data you're doing so many incredible things. Um, I think you're really like you're you're building your brand and building yourselves as thought leaders. You're like everyone seems to, I guess, because I just follow you. It seems like everybody knows you, but it's, it seems like you're doing an incredible job. And like you've gone from like Portugal to Spain to now Montreal. Like these are really big steps to make. Um, so how can we here today support you? So what what would be your ask of us here today? Uh, definitely for us and as people there, uh, as persons that are building um, a community and giving an open source web repo for every data scientist that want to test out synthetic data, our ask is if there are any data scientists that you know, uh, please uh, make them aware that this repository exists and provide us feedback. Feedback is the best thing we could have, so that's what mm -hmm. we all Okay, perfect. All right, feedback. So anyone out there who's data scientist, or if you know data scientist, and you may not know you know data scientist. Yeah. So also just share it out, out there in the world. Um, feedback for why data and kind of checking out the platform. And uh, Would you call it a platform? Am I using the right terminology? Uh, for the repository, we have out there the, the algorithms for synthetic data. So they are methods, okay. not the platform itself. But uh, Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, so go check out Y Data, and you just launched it. Did you just launch a new website? Did I see that? Yes, yes, like okay. uh, two months ago, less than two months okay. ago. Okay, okay. So it has a little bit, a little bit of an update. It looks like you kind of evolved over time. So even if you happen to have seen Fabiana back in March when we did our women's pitch, pitch, pitch night, um, go check it out now because things have shifted a little bit. Um, now, is there anything that we haven't talked about here today that you wanted to touch on? Mm. I don't think so. I think we, we covered very well what I use why data and uh, and other stuff related with companies in entrepreneurship. That's for sure. Um, I think the, yes, I'm uh, I'm good. You're happy. Okay. So someone has put in a question. I apologize if I didn't say that you can submit questions. I, I know I have to repeat that because people come in at different times. So we had someone here saying, just want to know what is the hardest challenge that a data science uh, the data science sorry faces at the moment? Because nowadays AI is everywhere with a lot of data interpretation. Yeah, but definitely I think uh, might be a bias, very biased uh, opinion. Um, That's okay. But there is this, uh, <laughs> this preconceived idea that there is a lot of data and data is everywhere. And, and, and there is, but the fact that there's a lot of data does not mean that you have the right data. And uh, I, I think mm. the, the biggest challenge is, as a data scientist, how can I have the right data for the problem that I want to solve for a business? Okay, I'm not talking about research. I'm talking about real world problems. Right. How can I have access to the right data? I think that's the, that's the biggest issue, definitely. Mm. Very interesting. Did that answer your question? Uh, it's so funny when you see like IG things. I don't know how to, I don't know what their actual name is, but um, whoever put this in, um, hopefully that answered a bit of your question. So finding the right data for the problem that you're wanting to solve or the question you're wanting to answer. Yeah, um, yeah especially when a lot of data has been collected in these biased ways or collected in ways that 
I find like sometimes like, you have to be very intentional with your data collection process and like understand what is it that you're trying to achieve and, and not ask questions just for the sake of asking questions, but like asking, like you're saying, like the right questions for the answer you're looking for. It actually takes a lot of work. Uh, I do a lot of survey development, um, like for, again, qualitative research, but we just spent the last week developing a serve or developing, developing kind of like a, we call it an idea book, but something that people are going to fill out. But we had to think about like the, have the end in mind and think about like, what, what do we really need to know to answer the questions in the way we want them answered, essentially? Like what, it's like, it's so com complicated um, to actually ask the right questions to get the yeah. right data. So <laughs> That's that's a good example, and I found that for a, uh, in a lot of surveys, when you do a survey without having not having in consideration th that, I found that data most of the times do represent an eye bias. For example, uh, one thing that I once uh, saw is mm -hmm. let's say you have this data for uh, mental health issues to to understand the level of mental health from people. That's that's yeah. a, a very taboo conversation and a lot of people just say they are okay and the data yeah. in the end show that something is borderline strange and you know that because on the data yeah. so that's a very good point so collection is definitely the first step for the right data yeah. for the problems that you want to answer definitely mm -hmm. yeah and asking the right people <laughs> there's so many things there's so many people, things that I can get into because people have so many biases and <laughs> think that they know things that they don't like it's so interesting us as humans we think we know things and we and we, th we think we know what we know and what we need and we don't I, it's very complicated and so it's, it's very interesting so I really appreciate that you're you built a solution that's going to help people with um with data <laughs> my fly is back um okay so once more um once more thank you so much for being here Fabienne I do have one last question but I want to get in um, a little bit here about uh, if you want to learn more about why data head over to why data AI um, you can you can follow Fabiana on Instagram at Fab, Fab Clement um, and where would be what's kind of the, the the best place that people can get in contact with you if they would like to uh, definitely LinkedIn it's uh, LinkedIn. it's my social no, net, no, uh, social network sorry okay perfect <laughs> okay <laughs> perfect okay get on LinkedIn then. Um, and also you can check out, if you go to volitionadvisors.com, you can check out a startup stories. I would give you the full URL, but it's very long. So if you check out um, hashtag startup stories, then you can see an interview that we did with Fabiana a little while ago. So it should be st startup stories, Fabiana Clement, co-founder and chief data officer of Wide Data. You can read a little bit more about her there as well. So my last question here today that I always ask is, what is one thing that brings you joy right now? Sorry? What I, is I one thing? Mind. Yes, that's okay. Um, what is one thing that brings you joy right now? That's a good question, but definitely my family. That's, that's that family. definitely, these are strange times, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's very, uh, so I think to be, lucky enough uh, to have everyone okay and mm. surrounded by them definitely uh, it's what make, makes me happy awesome and are, are you still in madrid then no no we we got uh I, and i've had a bit similar like you we were close for two weeks uh in a small apartment in the center of madrid and then we decided to return to portugal in may we were lucky enough okay. to our car there so we we could return by car that's good that's good yeah. yes <laughs> yes we were both in that that lockdown in madrid yeah. which was very difficult and then we both escaped sounds good <laughs> okay exactly. oh my gosh my friend's still there <laughs> anyways that's a whole other story but um thank you so much for joining us here today uh we'll be back next week um oh my gosh i'm forgetting what day of the week it is i think this is yeah. Okay. So next week it's going to be on Thursday, uh, and we're going to be talking to um, a woman named Rebecca. She's with Pivot and Pilot, which is going to be exciting. Usually we do them on Tuesdays, but we're going to mix it up a little bit next week and do Thursday. Um, but it was really great talking to you and get to, getting to know kind of a little bit more about you and about why data, but just kind of what your journeys look like, um, especially over the last little bit, and what 
the future holds for you. So I really appreciate you making time for us here today. Um, and thank you to everyone who's joined us, whether live or later on. Um, if you are joining us later on IG or YouTube, you can, IGTV or YouTube, you can always put a question in the comments. And if it's for Fabiana, we will make sure she gets that question. So thank you all so much for being here. And again, thank you so much, Fabiana. Thank you. Take care, Melanie. Take care. Bye, everyone.